Uh, one of the most uh, pressing issues the next U.S. president will have to deal with is the hawkish cries of his country's close ally, Israel. Uh, backing or blocking Tel Aviv's calls to bomb Iran may ultimately be a choice between keeping Israel's support and what is best for the American people. This reports RT's Guy in a Chichikan. A red line should be drawn right here. The line beyond which lies war with Iran. Many thought Benjamin Netanyahu's message at the UN General Assembly this fall was addressed not so much to the international community, but to Washington. Netanyahu would like to be able to communicate to the world that the Israelis are ready, which he has, to attack, and that it will be done with the full support of the United States. And he's not getting that. The tension in the media peaked when President Obama practically referred to Israel's warmongering as noise that he's trying to black out. Any pressure that I feel is simply to do what's right for the American people. And I am going to block out uh, any noise that's out there. Pledging full and unconditional support for Israel is part of any presidential election campaign in the U.S. The possibility of war with Iran adds a new dimension to this election season. The Israelis will attack the Iranians. They will attack. It's just a matter of when. So Americans must decide which presidential candidate can better manage the situation. Despite campaign bickering, President Obama has thrown allies like Israel under the bus. The last debate on foreign policy has shown the candidates hold almost identical views on the issue. What if the Prime Minister of Israel called you on the phone and said, our bombers are on the way, we're going to bomb Iran. What do you Bob, is, it, let's not go into hypotheticals of that nature. Uh, our relationship with Israel, my relationship with the prime minister of Israel is such that we would not get a call saying our bombers are on the way. When I've sent young men and women into harm's way, I always understand that that is the last resort, not the first resort. Of course, a military action is the last resort. As far as red lines for Iran? I understand and share Prime Minister Netanyahu's insistence that Iran should not obtain a nuclear weapon. My red line is uh, Iran may not have a nuclear weapon. Iran as a nuclear nation is unacceptable to the United States of America. President Obama said exactly the same thing. 29 standing ovations to the Israeli Prime Minister's speech before Congress, among other things, showed just how powerful the Israeli lobby is in Washington. Despite President Obama's support of a two-state solution for Israel and the Palestinians, his party members at their convention this fall called for moving the capital of Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. It remains evident that there is no daylight between the two parties of Israel. Obama was the guy who gave the impression, with his Cairo speech and others, that he was willing to begin to renegotiate America's policy on, 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 uh, you know, on Israel and Palestine. But in fact, when it came down to hard political realities, has backed off. But will he back off when Israel decides to attack Iran? Whoever is elected as America's next president will have to walk on the same razor blade, which is between Israel, that is itching to bomb Iran, and the American people, who don't want another costly and devastating war based on phony red lines. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chagan.